Hi, this is Ann with um, Gardening Greens, and this is my week update, uh, week eight week update. It is um, March 13th, um, 2012. Um, I've been going through a lot of um, personal reflection this past week. Um, finished up two classes in school. Um, have one uh, have a continuing class going on. I'm still doing Spanish. I have another eight weeks of that, and starting another class um, next week. So I'll be down to hit to two classes at one time instead of three. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Um, but I have been thinking a lot about food, and when we're not trying to lose weight we think about food, we plan our meals, we um, fantasize about going out, um, what we're going to eat, where we're going to eat, how good the food tastes, the food is better at this place than at that place, oh this grocery store has the best whatever. Our whole focus in our lives is food. And um, we gain weight because we use food to comfort ourselves. Um, it has become our drug of choice instead of dealing with um, the problems that we have in our lives. We use food as a substitute for anger. We use food as a substitute for um, sorrow uh, or and substitutes probably the wrong word. We use it as a, as a drug to alleviate the pain of those emotions. So I began to read um, a, a couple books and I, I going through the second time on, on this um, Setting Captives Free, the Lord's Table uh, program where it teaches you to be satisfied in Christ um, and, and focusing on Him instead of food. Well, I told y'all I picked up this book, um, Spirit-Led Eating by um, Erlene Fredrickson. And he is amazing. Um, when he started this book, he was overweight. Um, he had gone through, it took him a while, he had gone through the Bible and read every verse that he could find about food and God's uh, plan for us for eating and um, our relationship with him and he came up with this plan and I've only gotten through a couple chapters and I'm already just kind of like, wow, <laughs> you know, this this is me. Um, he talks about our family history and and when did did we first start using food as a comfort? Um, did you grow up in an abusive household where to b because you didn't get you know uh, loving attention? Did you use food to comfort yourselves? Did um, was there neglect uh, in your background where you used food as a comfort thing because you could get it and the in the sugar and um, and all that it, it does it acts like a drug on our bodies to to um, calm those painful emotions that we have so so that was some um, I mean I kind of knew this but it's not something that you really want to face um, that you're using food as a drug, but man, yeah, that that's exactly it, and it was my drug of choice. Um, let me let me um, let me read something to you from this book. See if I can remember it or remember where it is. He says. Um, 
what we need to do, and I totally agree, and I know this, that we have to kill our relationship with food and foster our relationship with God. Um, and unless we do that, we are going to be on that diet roller coaster because our relationship will still be with food. If we're dieting, our relationship is with food. How much we can have, how many calories it has, um, how much can I eat, when can I eat, um, do I have a calorie deficit today, can I um, you know, build up enough calorie deficit so I can go out and eat however I want to this weekend. And we are constantly thinking, measuring, preparing, um, planning our, our meals and our food. That's got to stop. Even, I'm having a hard time explaining um, what I'm feeling inside about this whole diet issue. Yes, I, I went on a high raw foods diet that turned into a lifestyle. Um, but here again, I'm thinking about the food. Um, where can I go get the best produce? Um, how do I want to fix this? When do I want to fix this? Should I eat one handful of nuts today or two? Um, is today a good day with the foods that I planned out to eat my portion of meat? I'm still focusing on the food. And that is not where I want to be. I do not want to... F to um, I do not want my life to revolve around food. I want it to revolve around Christ. Now, if you're not a Christian, I know that you're not going to understand this. And if you don't want to hear any more, flip it off. Um, I would love for you to finish listening um, and, and see where I'm coming from. Because really, um, Christ is, should be, everything to us. We should be totally satisfied in Him. He came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. He, you know, we are a sinful, fallen creature. The first disobedience in the Garden of Eden came over the issue of food. What happened? God said, one tree, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Obey me in this one little thing. Don't eat from that tree. It will hurt you. So what do we do? We ate from the tree. So from that very beginning, you know, food, <laughs> the whole human race was cursed because of a bite of food. And whether you're skinny, whether you're, or whether you're huge, if your life focuses on thinking about preparing and going to get food, then you need to learn to find your satisfaction in Christ, just like I'm learning. Um, I've been a Christian for about six years. When I became a Christian, God took out all kinds of things in my life that, that I no longer had any desire for. And I thank Him for that, I really do. But this has been an issue that really I've not been totally um, willing to turn over to him and I think it's time um, it's time that my preoccupation with food ends and my preoccupation with him begins and to learn how to be satisfied in Christ now this guy that wrote this book did eventually lose a lot of weight I, I think I read the first part of the book uh, to you last week about what he said about people asking him about how much weight have you lost, what diet were you on, and all that. Well, he, he doesn't go on a diet. He doesn't plan his meals. He doesn't, he's satisfied in Christ. And let me read this to you. Um, <clears throat> to those of you who received him before, but have walked like I did, living in bondage to food, while you tried to walk in his grace... There are several costs. Cost number one is your relationship with food as you know it must end. It must die. Colossians 3, 3 and 5 states, For you died 
and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Put to death, therefore, what belongs to your earthly nature, which is idolatry. God never intended for you to overeat or be overweight. You must decide to never use food in an abusive way again. This does not mean that you won't enjoy the food God provides for you. On the contrary, He will make your joy complete. But you will have to say goodbye to using food as a blanket to cover your emotional pain and anxiety. And isn't that so? Isn't that true? Um, shh. I had a bad day at work. I'm going to come home, kick back on the couch, and I'm going to eat a whole bag of potato chips along with a whole big container of um, sour cream with it. And then after that, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to have a full meal, maybe two plates. And I'm going to eat that, and when I get up, I'm still going to be hungry. So I want dessert. So I'll go to the freezer and I'll get a huge bowl of ice cream and eat that. But an hour later, I'm still hungry. Are we hungry for food? No. no, I don't think that's what it is. We're hungry to know who we are and why we're here and what is our purpose for being here and why am I in so much pain? Why do I think these thoughts? Why are people so cruel? Why do we live in this world where things are just so out of control? Those are, that's what we that's what we're hungry for. We're hungry for answers and we're hungry for the life that Christ gave us. But we just haven't taken a hold of it and started walking in that abundant life that he promised us. And I know this is a different um video that I usually post, but this has really been on my heart. Um <coughs> I look back on you know, over all my other videos, and it was all about the food. Um, what I could eat, when I could eat it, how I could eat it, um, how I could prepare it. And I didn't want it to be that way. Yes, I feel fantastic. I really do. Physically, I, I am just, I, I don't think I've ever felt any better um, in my life as I feel right now. Things are healing in my body that I never thought would begin to heal. Um, I started eating the things, you know, that God intended for our bodies to have to to um, give us the, you know, to give our bodies the nutrients that we needed. But there was still an emptiness when things would happen. Um, I would talk to somebody on the phone and. Uh, there would be a problem, and it may or may not, you know, um, affect me personally, but um, there, there may be a sadness or a worry or an anxiety over issues, and one of the first things that I thought about was like, uh, maybe I should go in and make me a big salad, or maybe I should go in and eat that half of watermelon um, so that the the emotional things behind the eating didn't change just the food changed so I am really working on not focusing my life around the scale and the measuring tape but on Christ and you may see a big change in this channel in my focus um, about the food issue and some of you may not even want to watch it anymore and that's I'm sorry I, I, but I'm not going to change um, who I am in Christ just to satisfy channel subscribers I love you all I really do um, but I, I really think that um, this is an issue behind our overeating. Um, we use it as a drug to cover up our emotional pain. And um, when we should be going to God to help with that pain, He um, He can answer all our questions and take care of all of our needs. He says, 
you know, I gave you everything that you need for life and godliness. And why we don't take a hold of that, I don't know. It's it's kind of crazy. It's like it's like um, committing suicide, spiritual suicide at that. Um, we're killing our souls um, with the physical when we could be taking hold of the spiritual and giving life to life to our spirit and our emotions and our bodies at the same time. We're going about it backwards. We're trying to take care of the physical. And hopefully the emotional and all that will take care of itself. Oh, if I can only become thin, then this will change and that will change. And I'll feel better about this and this problem will happen and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not the case. You, you really think about it. Um, thin people have problems too. They just deal with it in different ways. I mean, they may deal with it in anger, you know, or, or in other ways. We deal with it with overeating or undereating. Or we go on this cycle, you know, we'll, we'll diet for a while to get down to a healthy weight. And, uh, oh, well, I'm at the healthy weight again. Now I can eat the way I want to. And we'll gain it all back. So, the, the core issue is learning to deal with our problems. But we can't do it with food. We're going to have to learn to do it with the provisions that Christ gave us through his word. So that is the um, that's the approach I'm going to have to take. Um, he saved me six years ago. I made a commitment to submit my life to him in all areas. Now, did everything get submitted at one time? No, of course not. Um, it took me quite a few years to quit smoking it to it, it, I don't miss it now it's fine it's all over and done with um some things the Lord miraculously took away instantaneously like my desire for certain books and movies see I I would lose myself in those to cover up emotional pain it was so much easier living other people's lives instead of my own that I was just addicted to books and movies um, and not good books and movies either, just just things that um, put horrible um, thoughts and scenarios in my mind that, that uh, I would dream about and go over and over and over in my head. Um, so he took all that away, the desire for all that, instantly, and gave me a desire for his word. But what, where I failed in reading his word is I did not seek to know how he wanted me to live, how the, that love relationship between us, I did not realize that there was supposed to be that, that intimate relationship um, between me and Christ. Um, so I'm going to have to... Um, do a little more prayer on this and a little more seeking and see where things lead and I will um, be back next week with another update and in the meantime I pray that that um, the Lord would lead you to an epiphany of how you treat food. Have you made food your God? Even though you may be a Christian, you may say that you're a Christian, that you profess Christ. Who who or what are you really worshiping? Are you worshiping God or are you worshiping food? Or or something else even? Um, a drug, a TV program, a child, a, a, a spouse. Who is center who or what is central in your life? On my way to um, my husband's, uh, to my mother-in-law's yesterday, I saw a church sign. And I should have turned around and took a picture of it. Next time I go down, I hope it's still there, I will. It says, it said, you will always find time for the things that you love. And isn't that true? Those things that we love, we always seem to be able to find time for for our meals, 
uh, for our TV programs, for the books we like to read. We always seem to find time for those, but we never seem to find time to be quiet and be with the Lord. Um, and my prayer is that the Lord would, would open your heart to pursue that. And um, I love you guys. Take care. And I'll pray for each and every one of you every day. I love you and God bless you.